With the Klingon Empire stepping up its aggressive expansion of territory, the Klingon High Council would demand that its Starship engineers upgrade and refit its current D7 class designs to completely blow away the enemies of the Empire. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Klingon Katinga class battlecruiser to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Because this is a Beta Canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. The Klingon D7 battlecruiser had been a huge success for the Empire. Technological advances and the overall design of the D7 had proven the class worthy. But by the mid-2260s, the D7 was beginning to show its age. The United Federation of Planets and Starfleet Command had been pumping out starships and new starship designs at an alarming rate. And although the Klingon Empire had never cared much about keeping up with its neighbors, several encounters during the 2260s had been devastating for the Klingon Empire, proving that perhaps it was now time for the D7 to get an upgrade. The Klingon Empire has always been far more reserved with its starship designs, preferring to simply upgrade established designs rather than creating whole new ones. And so, the Klingon High Council demanded its starship engineers to do just that. Upgrade the D7 class to bring it to honorable status once again. Or all would be executed and replaced with a new team that could achieve that goal. Using stolen information from its intelligence officers throughout the galaxy, as well as technology gained from the Empire's short alliance with the Romulan Star Empire, the engineering design team would accomplish the High Council's demand and present the Council with the design plans of what was then known as the D7M class battlecruiser. Sitting at a length of approximately 350 meters with a width of approximately 252 meters, the D7M class would be designed to be crewed by 800 officers loyal to the Empire. It would be equipped with six upgraded WP-8 disruptor cannons, as well as two upgraded KP-3 photon torpedo launchers, one forward and one aft. It would also be the first Klingon class to contain the completely re-engineered cloaking device developed from the ones gained from the Romulan Star Empire during its alliance. Impressed with the design, the High Council would immediately order an entire fleet of D7M classes to be constructed, and the prototype vessel would be launched in early 2270. Conducting the standard defensive and offensive testing for a new class, the then named IKS Gaklor would perform adequately and be recalled to the Klingon shipyards for final adjustments. On its way there, however, the Gaklor, under the command of General Krag, would intercept a distress call from a Klingon freighter under attack by two Romulan birds of prey. Immediately setting course for the freighter, and at battle-ready condition, General Krag would be successful in destroying both Romulan starships and saving the freighter, before one last bird of prey decloaked and severely damaged his ship. Critically injured from the attack, General Craig, also known as Kintinga, which translates to Bringer of Destruction, was able to destroy the new Bird of Prey before succumbing to his injuries and dying. To honor the General's heroic and honorable sacrifice, the D7M would be officially renamed the Katinga class battlecruiser, and many songs would be sung of the General's triumphant defeat of the Romulans. By early 2273, the Klingon Imperial Defense Force had decommissioned almost all of the older D7 battlecruisers in favor of the Katinga model. But when Klingon listening posts discovered a large cloud-like entity traveling at high warp about to enter Klingon space, 
the High Council would send out a fleet of 50 Klingon starships to confront the Cloud. The entire fleet, comprised mostly of Katinga-class battlecruisers, was completely destroyed. And in a last-ditch attempt to stop the Cloud, the KDF would send three more Katinga-class battlecruisers to intercept the Cloud close to the Klingon Federation border. These vessels too would be unsuccessful at stopping the Cloud and would also be destroyed. This tremendous loss of so many top-of-the-line vessels would force the Council to recommission the bulk of its D7 decommissioned starships and rely heavily on a new small starship design known as the Klingon Bird of Prey, a direct taunting of the Romulan Star Empire's design while it rebuilt its fleet. It was at this time that Starfleet Command launched its new Constitution-class refit starship design. As the Klingon Empire watched, one starship of this new class, the USS Enterprise, was able not only to withstand an attack from the Cloud Entity, but seemingly defeat it before it destroyed Earth, making the Klingon High Council concerned at just how powerful this new starship class really must be. And as a direct result of this concern, the Klingon High Council would institute its own policy of technological advancement and incorporation for all future Klingon starship designs being constructed. Basically, what this meant was that the Klingon Empire would continually be on the search for new technologies. And once a new technology was discovered, it would automatically be placed in the next constructed starships coming out of its shipyards. Though this might sound like an excellent plan for the Empire to institute, it ended up being quite the opposite. This was because many of the technologies developed and instituted during this time had very little development of their own, let alone how these new systems would interact with older systems already incorporated into their design. This in itself tended to keep the Klingon Defense Force a little off balance as they would order a fleet of new starships that, once constructed, would simply not work properly, filled with technical bugs that could take years to work out. And once the bugs were ironed out, more often than not, the enemies of the Klingon Empire had already had enough time to develop their own countermeasures to this new technology, essentially keeping the Klingon Empire in a stalemate with the galactic powers of the time no one side having a clear advantage should a war break out. Nevertheless, the Katinga-class battlecruiser had proven itself to be a reliable and solid design for the Empire, and due to its easily upgradable design, would end up being in service through to the early 25th century. Even when the Vorcha-class battlecruiser made its debut in 2367, Many of the great houses of the Empire still preferred the Katinga class over this new, supposedly much more powerful design. During the short war between the Federation and the Klingon Empire in 2372, the Klingon Defense Force would still have many Katinga class ships making up the bulk of the Klingon fleet. And early in that year, while attempting to capture Starbase Deep Space Nine from the Federation, many of these starships would end up being badly damaged or destroyed during the battle. This would lead the Klingon High Council to finally begin to consider decommissioning the Katinga-class battlecruiser. Though this decommissioning process would take almost four decades to complete. But by the year 2410, the Klingon Defense Force had been purged of all remaining Katinga-class battlecruisers. This would not exactly mean the end of the class entirely though, as many unofficial smaller houses within the Empire would purchase these older starships to bolster their own personal defense forces, while others would also be converted to cargo carriers. And with the Federation and the Klingon Empires becoming closer and closer allies, the Klingon Empire would end up donating the IKS Gorkon to the Federation Fleet Museum to commemorate and foster amnity with its Federation allies. Overall, the Katinga-class battlecruiser 
would be seen throughout the galaxy as one of the most influential starship designs ever created by any species within it. Earning this class its honorable place in Klingon and galactic history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Katinga class battlecruiser? Do you want me to create more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel build a fleet to spread the honor? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Kaplah!